is, I know God's been good to me. Oh, down through the years, I know God's been good. Oh. I tell you that God been good to me. Oh, down through the years, I know God. Oh, down through the years, I know God good to me. Oh, down through the years, I know. I know God really been good to me. Yeah, he saved my soul from danger, and I know God. Oh, he saved my soul from danger, I know God. Yes, he saved my soul from Come on, put those hands together. Tell the Lord he's been good. Hey, 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 God, really been good. Hey, to me. Oh, he saved me with the Holy Ghost. And I know God. Oh, he filled me with the Holy Ghost. And I know God. I tell you that God really been good to me. And what you need, God, God got it. He got it. Everything you need. Oh, whatever you need. God. to be praised. Amen. If you'll grab your Bibles, there in Psalms 1 is where I want to, uh, if you would, communicate with you with about today. Amen. The first number of Psalms, such a very pivotal and important Psalm for every saint, for every Christian to endeavor into. Amen. If you have it, say amen. Amen. If you need a little bit more time, say, wait on me, Pastor. Amen. Psalms 1. Amen. And when you have it, stand on your blessed feet and we will praise God and celebrate his word together. God is a good God. This is the little word the Lord has given me and I want to share with you because God is so worthy to be praised. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, 
And in that law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And he shall he bring forth his fruit in his season. Amen. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so. But they are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Amen. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. Let God people say amen. Let us pray. Amen. Kind Father, in your precious name, we love you today. We thank you. Oh, yes. We honor you because you alone are worthy to be praised. Without you, we could do nothing. Without you, we would fail. I know without you, there is no hope for us. So, Lord, we thank you for your word. We ask that you let it rest in our hearts. And God, give me what to say as I stand behind your sacred desk. Help me, O oh God, to speak through you and speak in me, O oh God. If you would, speak to me first and then to your servants. O oh God, that we will love you, cause somebody to be saved and be filled with the Holy Ghost and live a holy life. And let us be ready when you come back for your church. O oh God, and we're going to ever love you and ever praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone let it agree say amen. amen. The Lord is blessing me, yeah, right now. Lord, right now. Oh, the Lord is blessing me right now. Lord, right now. What did he do, y'all? He woke me up this morning and he started me on. being blessed oh my god if you are blessed stay blessed Amen. and if you're not blessed you ought to get blessed I'm talking about being blessed of the Lord God is a good God for the word of the Lord say blessed is the man that walketh not in ungodly counsel blessed is that man that knows how to stray away from people who are not talking good sense about God there are a lot of people out in the world that give you, uh, uh, if you would, advice, but it's not godly advice. And for the saints, we have to stay away from the world. The Bible says, come out from the world and be separated from the world. Why? Because he's called us out of darkness into a marvelous light. Then say, nor standeth in the way of the sinner. We don't want to do anything to, to keep sinners from being saved. Y'all hear me. 
Anything for keep from leading them to the Lord. Our life should be a mirror where they can see the Lord Jesus. Amen. The world doesn't know anything about Jesus. They got to watch us. Yes. And we've got to have Jesus in our heart. Are y'all all right today? Amen. And then it said, don't sit in the seat of the scornful. The scornful are those that make fun of the church and make fun of the people of God. Yes. Amen. Don't sit in the seat with them. Amen. Don't be around folk that talk the church down. There are a lot of disparities in the church. There are a lot of faults that the church is working on within our own hearts. The, the Lord is working with us on a daily basis. But that is no uh, right for us to talk about the failures of others around us. The Bible says the strong ought to bear the infirmities what of the weak. Is that all right? The Bible said, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, consider one yourself in the spirit, another one in the spirit of meekness, consider yourself, lest you also be tempted. So we ought not talk down on the church. Don't talk down on the, I wish I was in the right church. Amen. Amen. Don't talk down on what's going on in the church and the preacher, the choir and the deacon. Pray for them. Amen. That's what we ought to do. Pray and be quiet. Is that all right? Amen. There are three groups in this lesson today. Amen. They're, they're the blessed, they're the ungodly, and then there are sinners. And when you look at this text, it identifies all three. Amen. And say, but the blessed man, he's going to meditate in the word of God day and night. And that's, if you're going to be with God, you're going to have to stay in the word. Amen. Just reading the Bible once a day ain't good enough when you're going through a whole lot. Sometimes you have to read it two and three times a day. Did y'all hear what I say? Amen. Sometimes you have to get in the word and stay there till God work with you until you're worked over. Amen. And I ain't talking about no half cooked meal, but I'm talking about cook right. Sometimes we need the word to help us fasten us down when we're moving too fast, moving in the wrong direction. That word is a light to us and a lamp to us and that he will direct us when we're in the wrong path. So we need that word in the right season of our life. Not only that, but then the Bible says you're going to be like a tree that's planted by the rivers. Listen, a water that bringeth forth fruit in your own season. When you're in God and God's word is in you, you are blessed. If you do what God's word said, you'll be blessed. Oh, I'm not looking at, I got this from so sorry, from Sister Chicken Bone and y'all don't hear me. You ain't worried about Brother Mustard and Bishop Windapang. You ain't worried about what they got, but what they getting. Just tell the Lord, bless me. Amen. And in the right time, in your season, God will bless you. Amen. He may not come when you want him, but he's always Amen. on time. And the Bible said, and your leaf will not even wither. I don't care what's going on in the neighborhood. It won't come nigh thee. When you are blessed of God, God will protect you. God will watch over you. I wish I could grab your minds together and think about how good God is. Yes. Everything you have been through, if it wasn't for God, you wouldn't have made it out of it. Right. Every time you got sick and somebody got sick with the same thing, they died, but you live. You can't give yourself another doctor the credit. Yes. You got to give that to God. When God make a way for you out of no way, I mean out of no way, and does it so well, you know it wasn't you but him. You ought to bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall come forth. I don't know that, but then he says, then, not only, and whatever you do, going to prosper. He said, but the ungodly, that ain't going to help for the ungodly. And that's a group that you say, well, who is the ungodly? Those that are pretending to be godly. You see, there's the godly and the ungodly. We ain't even talking about the sinners yet. But there are some who come to church and ain't got God in their mind. They mind on everything except God. Amen. They go throughout their whole day saying, I love God, but never talk to him. Y'all going to help me today. Amen. If you're godly, you're going to listen to the voice of God and obey. When you're godly, God will speak to you through his spirit. His spirit will speak to your mind. And your mind will obey his spirit. You let his mind get his mind speak to you. It'll change your whole atmosphere. Talking about feeling down, God will pick your spirit up. Being burdened, you remember he's a burden bearer. He's a friend when you don't have a friend. Oh, why would you be sad when you got the Lord in your life? 
So when you're with God, God can talk to your mind. How does he do it? He does it through the word of God. Hey, man, you can read poems all day, but if you want some power, you get in the word. You can sing songs and make you lift your spirit temporarily. But if you want a sustaining strength, a sustaining hope, one that will last, you have to get in the word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Asap wrote that and wanted us to be encouraged that when we put the word down inside, it will work for us when we need it. Not only that, but then the Bible said that the ungodly will not stand in the judgment. Amen. When God called his saints together, the ungodly is not going to be able to stand when the judgment of the Lord appears. Why? Because the Lord has said, I'm coming for a church without spot and without wrinkle. And if we have any spots or any wrinkles, that won't get us in. It's, amen. You can't be fooling around and be in foolishness when it's with God. The Lord has already given us a story in Matthews with the ten virgins. Five were wise and five were foolish. Amen. All of them had oil in their lamps. But the foolish did not take any in their vessels. They said, I got enough just to get by. And that's what the church is doing with a lot of us. We're just trying to just get by. You better put your whole heart, your feet, your mind, your soul in God. Get down in God and let God get fully down in your heart. So you'll be ready when the Lord comes. And when that time came, the, those that were foolish, they ran out of all. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. And the trials in this life can cause you to walk away from God. A lot of people have walked away from God, and they still walk in the church, but they don't walk away from God. They've lost their first love with God. They say they love the Lord, but their action is showing different. And you're going to know the fruit by the tree. You're going to know the tree by the fruit it bears. Amen. If you love the Lord, you're going to love everybody. Won't be no hate in your heart, no jealousy, no envy, no strife. Are y'all with me today? Amen. When you love God, you give God your whole heart. Amen. I don't care what that devil is doing. The devil is trying people to, uh, trying to suggest to people that there's a race war going on. That the whites hate, hate the blacks and the blacks hate the whites and the, the browns. And, and if you listen to that, you'll be somewhere looking crazy. Hate is not a, a, a color, it's a spirit. My God, some of us in there probably, if God didn't help you, you hate your own sisters and brothers. And they're the same color you are. It, hate is a spirit. It's not a color. Are y'all all right? Jealousy is not, not a color, a, a boo-boo them. It's a spirit. And the Bible says jealousy is as cruel as a grave. When you got those spirits lingering around the soul of the gate of your heart, you can't let them come inside the gate of your soul. If they ever get inside of the gate of your soul, they will contaminate your heart. You got to close that gate when you see that spirit. I don't care who bring it, close the gate of your heart. Close your soul because your soul has got to be pure when you see God. There can be no in oh my God. There can be no envy in your heart. There can be no jealousy in your soul. If you want to be blessed, you got to clean up all the time. Every day is a cleanup day. Every day is a prayer day. Every day is a sacrificial day. Lord, if you find anything in me that shouldn't be, take it out and cleanse me. Because you want to be blessed. Tell somebody, I want to be blessed. Not only that, but he said he knows the way of the righteous. God knows. The way. You're not going to fool God with your way. Did y'all hear me? You ain't going to come up with a way with God. You can fool the church, fool the people, fool your neighbors sometimes. But you ain't going to fool God in no time. The way of the righteous is already established. A highway shall be there and a way. For the wayfaring. Listen to what he said. But the fools won't even err therein. Wide is the gate. Y'all hear me? Hear me? Wide. Whole lot of folk going that way. But narrow is the gate. And straight is the path. And few there be that find it. What is the Lord saying? There's only a few people that want to do what's right. Oh, you can fill up a church with people, but how many hearts that want to be right? right. Well, I'm going because my grandmama was here. I'm going because pastor sings. I'm going because the choir sings. I'm going because they serve food on the fourth Sunday. You can have any excuse you want, but if it ain't for your heart, say, if it ain't for trying to please the Lord and live for him, your purpose is all wrong. You want your purpose to be right with God. Is that all right? For not only that, but then God wants to bless the righteous. 
Amen. The world wants to punish the righteous. The world has sinners and they want to do what they want to do. Amen. But the righteous is not going to partake with sinners. Amen. Amen. The, the world will perish with sinners, but God will protect the righteous. Right. A lot of people saying, well, how in the world am I going to survive if I don't take the mark of the beast? Don't you worry about taking the mark of the beast. The Lord said, if you take the mark of the beast, I have no part with you. Yeah. Then you say, well, how I look at how whenever there's a crisis in the United States, folks get in all kind of chaos. They get all scary and nervous, and they, they look like they get backwards as if they've never been on earth before. Right. Get to run into Walmart, clean the shelves off. It's a storm coming, and they just clean every shelf off. Buying all the food that they should have been given to help somebody else. Right. Buy all the water, the bread, and the butter. I mean, they just empty everything. Go in the bank accounts. And, and, and I just look at folk. I, I, I can just imagine what it's going to be when the mark of the beast take place. When the gas was out, folk were just lining up at it. They told the people, don't get nervous. We can fix the problem. They still got nervous. I don't care how much money they had. They was loading up everything, filling up everything. I'm out of gas. You, it's just not your first time being out of gas. But God will take care of the righteous. When you don't fail to, if you fail to trust God, then you don't trust him. You got to trust God when it's bad. You can trust him when it's good. It's easy to sing I'm happy with Jesus alone when you got six figures in the bank. But can you sing the Lord, take my hand when you're, you got a negative balance and say I'm happy yet with Jesus. See, sometimes the way will get rough and the road will get rough and hills will get hard to climb. But you've been with God long enough to know that if he did it for me back then, he'll do it again. When you're blessed, you just stand on what you know. Eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor have it entered to the heart of men the good things that God has in store for them that love him. When you love God, God going to take care of you. If you take care of God's business, God will take care of your business. If you do right, God will take care of you. When a man's way please the Lord, all his enemies, I'm not just talking about people, but whatever enemy come against you, God will take care of them. God is a good God. There in Psalms 26, 5 through 6, it said, I've hated the congregation of evildoers. I will not sit with the wicked. Uh, look, I will watch mine hands in innocence, for I will compass thine altar, O Lord. Amen. Ain't no sense of us hanging around with the devil trying to have a sanctified life. Amen. You can't come and be in a nightclub on Saturday night singing the blues and then come to church and shout on Sunday. Y'all going to help me preach it. Amen. You can't act so saved on Sunday and you cussing at your house. Here we go. Amen. On Saturday, Amen. you fighting and got a brawl going on. And on Sunday, you're sitting here like sweet little angels. Did y'all hear what I say? If you saved that church, you ought to be saved at your house. Am I in the right church? If you saved that church, you ought to be saved on your job. If you got the Holy Ghost in here, you ought to have the Holy Ghost in the stove. Everywhere you go, you ought to have the Holy Ghost. If you're blessed, he'll be blessed everywhere. Everywhere folks see you, they ought to know you're blessed. I remember one time I was at the bank. The lady come to church one time. She was over there just speaking in tongue at the bank. And I started to speak. The Lord said, don't say nothing to her. I stood behind her in line. She just speaking in tongue. I said, she's just going on off the day. And the next few minutes, she started talking about her grandchildren. And before that, she started cussing her about how bad. It was. I said, it, it, sweet water and bitter water can't come out the same mouth. Did y'all hear me? You can't be all glory, glory, hallelujah in the first statement. In the second, you mad as the devil. If you're saved, you ought to be saved. I'm trying to help somebody today. Enter not into the path of the wicked. Nor go in the way of evil men. Avoid them, the Bible said. Pass by. Listen. Turn away. Pass away. For they, for they sleep not, except they do mischief. How about the evil now? And they sleep is taken away until they want somebody to come to fall. Right. Amen. Your enemies, you already, every one of us got enemies. Amen. And they are always trying to do anything to keep us from being blessed. Yeah. 
If you're trying to live for God, your enemy is always plotting against you. But what you need to do is keep your mind on Jesus. God will fight for you if you live holy. Did y'all hear what I say? God will fight for you if you do what's right. If you do right, God will take care of your enemy. They will plot against you, but God will fight in your behalf. Amen. Stay away from the wicked people. This Psalms 1 is trying to tell you how to be blessed and stay blessed. Don't get caught in their traps. Don't When they tell jokes about the Bible and, and people and church, don't laugh with them. You're not supposed to partake in that. When they talk about evil thoughts and man, you don't walk away, you don't walk around that. You shun the very appearance of evil. Amen. God is always there to take care of the saints. Amen. Whatever is going on, Jesus never fails. Jesus will never forsaken us when we do what's right. The Bible said in Matthew 24, uh, 12 and 24, said then the Pharisees went out and held counsel against the Lord Jesus and how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from them and a great multitude followed him and he healed them all. Now listen to what this is saying. When there was evil plot against Jesus and he knew that they were plotting, he didn't go get scared and not go do what he was assigned to do. Some of us, when we find out we have enemies, we go shut down. I ain't doing that no more. They trying to hurt me. Jesus went right on and did what he was commissioned to do. Jesus went, took the multitude and healed all of them. When God is with you, he's more than the world against you. You don't have to worry about folk liking you. You ought to might as well know there's no rule in the Bible to say folk got to like you. We want to be loved so much and caressed so much by folk. Why don't you love God and love yourself? Amen. Hey, man, what would draw folk to you is that they know you love the Lord. Hey, man, I remember one time I was getting a little weight. They said, you're getting too big. And I lost a little, you're getting too small. And then when I lost the weight, you sure look nice. Then when I gained the weight, then they said, oh, you done lost some more. I didn't, I didn't know what to think of. <laughs> folk, get, they got a lot of common. You can't go on what folks say. Amen. Just love God and stay with God. They, they told me I was little when I gained weight. Hey, Amen. When the enemy plot against you, God got a plan in place. And he intends for you to do what he has assigned you on earth to do. Keep your mind on God. Pay attention to what God has said. Amen. Amen. The foolish can't hang around the righteous. Amen. They don't want to hang around the righteous. Why is that? Because the righteous is talking about right. Yeah. Talking about doing what's right. And if you want God to bless you, you got to do what's right. Amen. I don't care what plan the, the enemy come with. I don't care what circumstance arise that make you want to do what's wrong. I want to tell you that they do what is right. Amen. And God will bless you. What are you talking about? God will help you if you want to be helped. I remember uh, in the Bible days, uh, David had a good Levi, one of his strongest men, soldiers. Amen. You are who, who, Uzzah, who was, saw the Ark of the Covenant falling because the ox had fallen in, in, in the mud and, and tripped. And the, ox, and the Ark of the Covenant was getting ready to fall off. And he grabbed it with his hand. And immediately he died. Because he was not supposed to touch the Ark of the Covenant. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? He was trying to do good, but he didn't understand the law. And we've got to do what God say do and understand his law. And if we do what God say in his word, then we receive the blessing of the Lord. There's no other way around trying to do what's right. This man, if he had known that you're not supposed to touch the Ark of the Covenant, he wouldn't have touched it. But he was trying to use his own might. To hold up something that was so sacred and so holy and it got him killed because God was angry with him. And David didn't know what to do with the Ark of the Covenant after that. But he realized I've got to get it to Jerusalem. But he allowed it to go in Obed Eden's house. Obed Eden was just a normal, common person. When he got there, put it in his house to keep it safe till they could get it to where it belonged. The Bible said it stayed there. Listen in his house for 90 days. And all why it was there, the blessings of the Lord begin to flow in his house. You got to know when your house is blessed. Don't mess with a blessed house. 
When God is blessing you, you tell the Lord, thank you. How, how, uh, now we have the word of God now. When we put the word of God in our house, live by the word of God, our house can become blessed. You ought to want to be blessed like obed -E. The blessing of the Lord is rich. Amen. Every time you get sick, you get healed. Every time you go down, God pick you up. Every time you get lost, God will find you. Every time you're a burden, he's a burden bearer. He's a mind fixer, a heart regulator. I'm talking about being blessed. When you lose loved ones, God will comfort your heart. When you're down in sorrow, God will lift you up. He'll be your joy. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. And how can you love the Lord? Well, you love him with all your heart. Not only that, but then you want to stay with God. Stay when God bless you. Keep his word inside. Keep peace in your mind. That's how you're going to be blessed. Keep the peace of the Lord. He said, my peace I give it to you. Not as the world give it to you. But I give this to you that in the world you're going to have tribulations. But be of what good cheer. Why? Because I've already overcome the world. So when you're going through your trial, remember you if you got God in the inside, you got the overcomer in the inside. Remember that when you get sick and you don't feel your best. If you got Jesus on the inside, you got the doctor of doctors in the inside. Remember when you don't know what to do and you got God in the inside. He said, I'm the compass of your way. Won't God lead you? Won't God guide you? When God is with you, he's more than the world against you. When you got God in the inside, don't worry about your enemies. He'll fight for you. But the name of the Lord is a strong child. The righteous run into it and are safe. You're safe in God. You're blessed in God. You're delivered in God. You have peace in God. I'm not being blessed. You ought to want to be blessed. How are you going to do it? Stay in God. And let God stay in you. I hear some people talking about, I got the church inside. You can't fit the church inside you. <laughs> At best, that's silly. But you need to be in the church. Yeah, I got the church inside me. If they inside you and you don't come to church, we in, we in a miserable situation. <laughs> Amen. Everybody, the church is a group of baptized believers in Christ. Amen. All of us make up the church. Amen. And I know you ain't got all of us in you because I love coming to church, so I couldn't be in you. Is that all right? Amen. You have to be careful what you say. Amen. Because Jesus paid for the church with his own blood. Amen. And if, 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 if you ain't got the blood of Jesus, you hear me, how can your church be in you? And another thing, how could you be the church? Jesus said, I lay down my life for the church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. That's what he was working for, to build up a church. But he wants them to be baptized believers in Jesus. So if you don't have the Lord, you ought to accept the Lord in your life. Repent and be baptized with, in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And when you receive the Holy Ghost, you want to start walking. The places you used to go, if you're going to be blessed, you can't go there no more. What you used to say, how you used to talk, you don't talk that way no more. Huh? What you used to do, you don't do that anymore. Why? Because your life has changed. You walked in darkness, now you're walking in the light. And when you walk in the light, you have fellowship with God. And that's when the Lord begin to bless your life. You see his, your path get brighter. You see things working out better for you. People say, since I've been saved, it don't look like it's gotten any better. It was already worse. You just saw things better now. And God will give you wisdom how to deal with those that don't, that don't want to do right. God will give you wisdom how to, how, to enter, how to treat your enemy. Instead of being mad and confused and awkward, God will give you peace. While they're upset and they may never change, they may always hate you. But that shouldn't stop you from loving God. And then Jesus showed us how to love our enemies. He illustrated and demonstrated that. So when we have enemies... God being in God will show us how to love our enemies. Because when you love God, you don't hate nobody. Amen. Ain't no hate in God. Am I right? Amen. Ain't no hate in God. Amen. Only love. So if you love the Lord, then God loves you. Amen. Is that all right? Love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, and with all your strength. We thank God for his word today. 
I wanted to encourage you to be blessed. A lot of people want to shout on being blessed. Oh, I got a message there. I got you felt like, son, honey, live right. Because shouting ain't the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a righteous lifestyle. When you have the Holy Ghost, you're living right. So when we leave here today, when you go on your job, when you go in your home, and don't think you're not going to be tried, but you're going to be blessed. Is that all right? Don't think the devil won't come after you. That's a part of life, but you're going to be blessed. How am I blessed when everybody's talking about me? How am I blessed? Well, you're the one they're talking about. Didn't nobody know you until they started talking about you. Now you're a hot name. Everybody know you now. Didn't nobody even know who you are. Folk got the line on you, so everybody wanted to find out who, who is this person. Now you're a commodity. Folk respect you. Because when they see you, they say, that ain't what that person act like. So you just live holy, and holy will, will protect you. If you live righteous, righteous will cover you. You don't have to worry about what folks say. They, gonna, they may follow you around everywhere you go. Let them follow you. They'll see where you're going. And if you, if you keep coming to church, they may follow you to church. Is that all right? You don't want them to follow you to the nightclub. Let them follow you to church. Is that all right? To the bingo casino. Don't want to follow you there because you ain't supposed to be going there. If you blessed, you ain't supposed to tell me the Lord done blessed me to win some money at the lottery. You know you ain't blessed. That's a curse. How would you do that? You don't want to do that. God said, I will supply all your needs. He don't want us trying to come up with a plan. He going to take it. When you pay your tithes, y'all going to help me. And pay your offering. And pray it and bless it unto the Lord. Be honest with God. Do it like he said. He said, I'll open up the windows of heaven. And pull you out of blessing. That you will not have room to receive. If you can just trust God with that. Trust in him with all your heart. And don't lean to your own understanding. But in all your ways. Just acknowledge God. And he shall direct your path. I'm about being blessed. And just because you shout don't mean you blessed. I've seen folks shout and turn around and curse. Can sing a song and write it. Have folk crying and they cussing. And you over there falling all out. You want to be blessed. Amen. You may not do much, but be blessed with what you do. You may not have a degree, but just still be blessed. You may not have a lot of money, but be blessed. Because if you get the favor of God, you may not need no money. Having favor of God is better than having money. Y'all ever been anywhere, any place, somebody said, I got you today, I'm going to take care of your meal. I got your gas. I, I know I done done that for folks. The Lord said to buy their meal. They didn't bit more know who I was than a man on the moon. And they wasn't all black. I had, it didn't make no difference what color they were. God will put you in the right place. Y'all just keep living. You'll see it. But can I bless you today? And, 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 and if you bless, you ain't going to be talking about, what's this for? You bless, you know what it's for. Because you bless. Why are you giving me this? What this mean? <laughs> your suspicious self. No wonder you ain't getting much. Shut your mouth and say thank you. Just say thank you, Jesus. You say thank you, Jesus. If they gave it wrong, you put Jesus on. They about scared to try anything else. Thank you, Jesus. They, they went back. Oh, I was trying to do something else. Yeah, but thank you, Jesus. You ain't done nothing. Jesus did everything. Talking about being blessed. If it had not been for the Lord Oh, tell me The church doors are open Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord So if it had My, 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 my Not been The church doors open The Lord
time I'm being blessed. He rocked me in the cradle of his arm. When he knew I had been battled by storm. So if it had oh, not been for my, my, my. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, Lord. God is a good God. Let the church say amen. amen. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, we don't know where we would be. Is there someone that may want prayer today? If you want prayer, we certainly want to pray with you.